Good morning, classmates! So, on third na lesson natin today, it's all about seafood. Kasi since magpapasko na, and it's very important that we learn how to check if our seafood is fresh, yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Excited ako kasi mahilig ako sa seafood. Excited din ako kasi i-share ko sa inyo kung ano yung pag-aralan namin. While I was doing my lesson plan, natututo din ako because I have been researching in different sites para mas kumpleto yung i-share ko na knowledge sa inyo. Aggressive na! Aggressive siya! Ang hasang niya should be pink or red. Ito bright and clear yung eyes niya. Kunti na makikita doon na ako. <laughs> yung antena nila dapat makalikin pa. Yun! Ang sarap ko po yung pink! Yung binuho ko yung lecture ko today! So what are the basic things that you have to remember when handling your seafood in your kitchen? It's very important that first, not just seafood, it's important that you wash your hands with warm, soapy water before and after you handle your seafood. Same thing with your kitchen equipment. Your chopping board, your knives, your kitchen surfaces, you have to wash it with warm, soapy water. Why? Because we avoid natin ang cross-contamination or yung germs and bacteria na matransfer from our countertops to our seafood. Same thing as seafood to our countertops. Dapat malinis ang ating kapaligiran. I would advise that you use your disposable paper towels when you handle your seafood. Para hindi nyo inuulit yung ginagamit ninyong washcloth. It's important kasi para tapon na lang kayo ng tapon. There are lots of paper towels out there na biodegradable, nagawa sa bamboo. Marami naman ng choices. Marami naman ding mga mamura na nabulto-bulto nyo bibilihin. If magagastos ang kayo at nangihinayang kayo na ang dami nyo ng nasasayang na paper towels, pwede naman kayo gumamit ng kitchen towel. Just make sure na pagkatapos yung i-handle, ang seafood ninyo, hindi nyo ito uli gagamitin. Kailangan nyo hugasan ng kitchen towel ninyo and at the same time, ibabad sa warm water na maraming sabon or may bleach. Just to be sure na talagang clear na siya sa lahat ng mga tinatch niya na malalansa or seafood. Hindi siya pwedeng paulit-ulitin dahil kinalat nyo lang yung <laughs> nilinis nyo nga, kinalat nyo lang din ulit. Of course, it's important that you replace your dish sponges frequently or it's much better that when you use your sponge for seafood things or seafood na mga containers and everything isa lang yung gagamitin niyo para yung lansa nandoon lang tapos ibi-bleach niyo siya ibababad niyo siya mainit na tubig para siguradong patay ang bacteria germs and viruses yan ang iniiwasan natin na yun nako yun talaga yung mga bacteria at germs and viruses kailangan natin gawa ng paraan. And it will start in your kitchen, it will start at your home, it will start with you. It's also important that you keep raw and cooked seafood from coming in contact with each other to avoid cross-contamination. So let's say, meron na kayo marinated na seafood, just make sure na pag naluto na yung seafood, hindi nyo gagamitin yung same container na yun para ibalik yung seafood dun. It should be in a different container or platter already. If you want to use your marinade sa seafood ninyo, just make sure, di ba, binabrush natin yung marinade sa ating mga iniihaw. Make sure bago nyo i-brush yung marinade na yon, cook it first. You boil it first until mag-reach sa 140 Fahrenheit na temperature para sigurado na matay na yung bacteria niya na sa loob. So those are the things that you have to remember when handling seafood. Sanitize your kitchen, sanitize your bowls and containers, your chopping boards, and your knives. Let's move on to chapter 2. Chapter 2 is how to check if your fish and shellfish are fresh. Bago ko to i-discuss, mag-gloves ako. Why? Even if you're wearing gloves, it's still important that you wash your hands before and after using your gloves. Ayoko magkaroon ng cross-contamination from my skin to the seafood. Siyempre, pinapawisan yung mga kamay natin. So, dun pa lang, nagbe-build up to tayo ng bacteria. We start with fish. Ang lahat naman ng isda, karamihan, iisa lang naman kung paano mo titignan. But there's one golden rule that you have to remember when you check your seafood or your shellfishes. There are three senses that you have to use. Your sense of sight, your sense of smell, and your sense of touch. Bakit importante ang sight? Una-una, titignan nyo kung ang isda ay fresh. Ang hasang niya should be pink or red. Yan, ibig sabihin, fresh itong lapu-lapu natin. And at the same time, you also have to check if the eyes are bright, clear siya, the scales 
gagamitin niyo yung sense of touch niyo dapat nakakling sa skin niya. Hindi siya dapat nagde-scale on its own. Hindi dapat nangyayari yun. Kasi kapag ka nagde-scale on its own na siya or nakikita niyo lang na may umaakit-akit ng kaliskis, ibig sabihin hindi na siya fresh. Yung fish ay hindi dapat slimy. At saka ang fish, importante, pag nasa palengke kayo, dapat nakababad siya sa yelo. Doon natin maano yung freshness niya. Skin should be bright and shiny and no discoloration. So you can see our lapu-lapu here. It's bright and shiny. Kung halimbawa, ang kulay ng lapu-lapu ninyo or grouper ninyo is red, it should be bright red. And then, of course, the smell. The smell of the fish or any seafood in general should smell like the ocean. Hindi siya dapat malansa or at least it should smell like a cucumber. Pag malansa na siya, nagsisimula na siyang magtanggal ng freshness sa katawan niya. Tayo nga minsan nagiging malansa kapag ka dugyot na dugyot na tayo, di ba? Ganun din ang mga isda. So that's very very important na maalala ninyo. Now, we transfer to our squid. I have here, pusit lumot. You'll know when your squid is fresh if it's really white. Ang squid talaga, when you see them sa ocean na naglalangoy-langoy pa, puti at clear yung kanilang skin or yung kanilang flesh. When you see this part na nagbablack na, yung ink sac nila pumutok na. Kumakalat na siya sa layer ng skin niya. Yung eyes niya should be bright and clear. Ito, bright and clear yung eyes niya. Kunti na lang kikidata na ako nito. The flesh should be firm and plump. Pag kinurot-kurot niya siyang ganyan, meron siyang bounce back. It should be deliciously plump. You can actually buy frozen fish or squid sa mga groceries ngayon. When you do, make sure to check the inside package. Pag may icicle na yung package sa loob ng frozen seafood na binili nyo, it means that it was been refreezed already. Kaya siya may icicles. Ibig sabihin, na-defrost na siya, binalik lang sa freezer. So pagka ganun, nagde-deteriorate lalo ang freshness. We now have our Shrimp. Maraming mahilig sa subo. Lalo na ngayon, I'm pretty sure part of your menu for this coming Christmas, may shrimp, may crab. Siyempre, pag Pasko, aandar tayo ng seafood something, di ba? Sa shrimp, ang kailangan nyo lang alalahanin is, yung antena nila dapat makadikit pa. Ganyan. Yung eyes nila should be protruding and clear. Kung baga, hindi nagdi-disintegrate yung itsura ng mata niya. So, ito ay bilog na bilog. It's bright black. The shell should have a firm and glossy appearance. Just enough pinching to check if the flesh is firm and plump. And the shells are firm and glossy. Ito yan. It's also important, when you smell your shrimp, amoy dagat siya. Ang shrimp, kapag nag-amoy chlorine, hindi talaga siya fresh. Kung baga, ilang beses na siyang freeze, at para maritain lang yung freshness niya, ginamitan na siya ng chemical. Actually, ginagamit ang chlorine to mask the offensive odor of the shrimp. So, you have to remember that. Shrimp that has spots of pink on the surface may not have been properly iced. So, pagka napunta kayo sa palengke at ang mga hipon or subpo ay hindi nakayelo, dahil huwag ka doon bibili. Kasi ang shrimp, madaling masira. Mainitan lang siya, or wala siyang yellow, or, or ano, magsuspoil na siya, marirelease na yan ng bacteria niya. Ang kukunin niyo sa market, yung shrimp na nakababad sa yellow. Kasi alam niyo, inalagaan talaga sila. Don't purchase shrimps that are too dry and tough. It means, pagka ganun na yung texture niya, dry and tough, it means it has been frozen for a long period of time. You don't want that. Kasi... Misa ka na nga lang magsusugpo, bibili mo pa ba yung ligwak na ligwak na. So, importante that you know these little things when you purchase your seafood. So, there are two types of prawns. May mga prawns na cultured. Cultured prawn ang mas matigas. Ang wild prawn is really slightly orange in color. Though there are shrimps that you'll see in the market na hindi pa tayo pagka orange niya. May orange dito, may orange dito, tapos dito. Hindi. Ibig sabihin, hindi talaga siya kulay orange. Ang wild prawn, ang natural color niya talaga is orange. So, also important, tanongin nyo, wild prawn ba ito, Manong? <laughs> ito ba yung cultured prawn, Manong? Pag sinabi ni Manong, kung ano siya, hindi, eh, ibig sabihin, honest sa inyo si Manong o si Manang. So, you have to ask your suke. Pag halimbawa, itatouch niyo lahat ng seafood niyo, magpapaalam kayo. Kasi yung iba medyo maselan, ayaw nila nang dinudut-dut-dut yung mga parinda nila. Pero syempre, dapat mahawakan niyo. Importante yan. And then, we transfer now to our mussels. When you purchase them in the market, they should be stored in ice. Kasi buhay pa sila. And you also have to look for mussels that are tightly closed. Parang ganyan. Tightly closed na siya. When you see your mussels na medyo nakabukas siyang ganyan, Pwede tanungin, 
Buhay ka pa ba? <laughs> kasi, pwede niya siyang itap. Kasi may possibility sumara pa siya dahil nahiya siya, nahuli siyang nakachika sa'yo. Magsasaway ang ganyan. Of course, muscles should also smell like the ocean. That's very important. All the seafood should smell like the ocean. Pagka bumili kayo sa palengke ng tahong, ibili nyo kay Manong na ako. Ilalagay sa supot. Huwag itatali yung supot. Your muscles and your clams or any shellfish should be able to breathe. Pag nilagay sila sa supot at sinil sila, so nawalan sila ng hagen sa loob. Aba, ikaw ba naman? Kung hindi ka ba naman mawala ng hininga pag binalot ka sa supot, hindi ba mamamatay ka rin? <laughs> Ganun din sila. It's important na hindi siya nakabuhol and nasa ibabaw siya ng basket niyo para nakakahinga pa siya. Now, we go to our clamps. Our clamps should also be tightly closed. Eto, dapat ganyan siya. Nakasara siyang ganyan. Ibig sabihin, buhay siya. So, pag tinap ko siya, just gently tap it. Huwag niyo naman pokpok eh. Yay! Nagsara! Uy, thank you! Binuho mo yung lecture ko today! I'm so happy! Yon, magsasara siya. Pero pagka pinakuluan niyo to, tapos hindi siya bumuka, hindi siya buhay. So, once you cook your clams, and there are clams that are still tightly closed, you have to discard them. Ibig sabihin, patay na sila. Itong mga clams natin, you can only refrigerate for 24 hours. Kasi nga, mas madali siya mag-spoil. Ang clams na namatay, madaling makapag-spread ng bacteria kasi nga patay na siya. So, you don't want your other clams na nahahawa sa kanya because when that happens, mas malaki yung possibility na sumakitan siya ninyo. That's one. Two, you'll have an amibiasis or diarrhea. The shell of your clams should be perfect. If there's a chip, or crack, please don't get it anymore. It means patay na siya. So, sa mga nagtitinda sa palengke, pagka may mga ganito ng halimbawa, may mga clams na kayo na nasamang nasira na ang shell, nag-chip na or nag-crack na, tanggalin nyo na po. Mas lalo kayong walang mabebenta <laughs> kung hindi nyo natanggalin yung sira na. Pagka sira na yung isa, magsusunod-sunod na yan. We move to our crabs. Alam mo, para sa Pilipinas lang, meron tinatawag na babae, bakla, at lalaki na crab. Actually, na sa Amerika to eh. Nagtanong ako doon sa isang, ano, sa grocery, kung meron siyang gay crabs. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung na-offend ko siya. It's an honest question. <laughs> Gusto ko malaman kung meron siyang bakla kalimango. Sabi sa akin, is there such a thing in the Philippines? <laughs> Maraming genders. Pagdating niyo pa lang sa palengke, you have to check where your crabs are stored. Crabs should be stored in a dry area with proper ventilation. Ang crabs na makikita niyo na nasa aquarium, naglalang, ganun ba maglangoy ang crab? Di ba pa ganun yung crab? <laughs> Nagaganong-ganon. Ang factor na nangyayari sa crab, they release too much energy. Nasistress sila masyado. So when that happens, yung reserves nila or yung meat nila, parang nawawal na rin ng proper texture. Ayaw ng crabs na nag-exert siya ng too much energy. Kasi nga nahuli na siya. <laughs> nahuli na nga siya. Papagurin pa. And it's also important to ask your seller kung kailan nahuli ang mga alimango. Ideally, ang pagkakahuli ng crabs, within two days after siyang hulihin, yon yung perfect time na makabili kayo or ma-purchase yung crab kasi yung freshness niya buong-buo pa. So, yan ang belly ng crab. So, how would you know if your crabs are malaman? Pag prines nyo to, this is a bit firm. So, I suppose that maraming laman itong babaeng ito. Siya ay babae kasi mas makapal yung dito niya. It's also important to check the shell of your crab. Ang shell ng crab na hinahanap niyo ay dull. Parang malungkot. Kung may battle scars pa siya, that's better. Ibig sabihin, full grown na yung crab na yun. It shouldn't be shiny. Pag shiny, abay, magtaka kayo baka nilagyan na ng nail polish para kumintra siya. It shouldn't be shiny. Of course, how would you know if your crabs are alive? It should be aggressive. Yung maligalig na crab, kailangan malikot siya. Ay! Ayun, aggressive. Ayun, 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 ayun. Okay yun, okay yun, okay, okay. So ito, ayan, aggressive na, aggressive siya! Grabe! Ayan, ganyan ka-aggressive. Yung dadaigin si Sarah Heronimo sa mga dance number niya. O, Debs? A full-grown crab is well-used claws. Meaning, yung crab na ganito, yung sinabi ko may battle scars, malaman ang claw niya. Nagbabari siya dahil kumisan malaki ang sipit pero pag bukas mo, wala nang laman. Ang fresh na crustacean, crustaceans are crabs, lobsters, slipper lobsters, kuratsa, yan ang mga crustaceans. Hindi siya dapat nag-aamoy ammonia. It should be odorless. Odorless ka ba? Ano ba may nang ammonia? 
ฮะมาปังเฮอ่าคิดว่าชอบมาปังเฮนี่เลยกูคานอ Okay. These are the things that you have to remember when you are purchasing fresh seafood or crustaceans. We now go to our next chapter, which is the seafood fabrication. We start with our fish. I have here my lapu-lapu. Bagong huli siya, ando pa yung hook sa loob. So, we have here, panik-pick. Tatanggalin natin to. So, this is why it's important that you have your kitchen scissors. Pero kung sanay naman kayo gumamit ng butcher's knife, Okay lang naman din. Baka mas madali para sa iba yun. I have two trash bowls. So, one is for mga carcasses or ano na, mga seafood and yung isa para sa mga paper towels. You can take out the fins kasi hindi naman ito nakakain. Hindi wala na siyang laman. Ay, grabe. Okay. Itong lapu-lapu na ito ay may kaliskis pa. You can ask sa palengke or sa grocery kung pwede nyo ipakaliskis na yung isda. So, you have to be very careful when you take it out. But of course, when you go to the market, please stay safe. Wear the proper gear. Tatanggalin natin ang kanyang hasang. Ito na yung hasang. Ayun, kaya hindi ko siya maikabit kasi humaharam yung hook. Pag hinila ko kaya siya, sasama lahat. <laughs> Nakikita ko siya! <laughs> Lumabas lahat! Chijing! Aboo! Ayan ba yung hook niya? Woo! And then, slit the tummy. Open. Kung malalaman niyo, kung talaga nakuha natin lahat ng loob niya. Kasi ibig sabihin, malinis na siya dapat siya. So, malinis na siya. Sumama na siya dun sa hook. Thank you, hook! And then, your back of your knife, yun lang yung ipangkakaliskis ninyo. Makikita niyo yan, na wala na siyang kaliskis kapag ka dinaanan niyo ng kamay niya papunta at pabalik nang hindi sumasabad yung kamay niya. Ibig sabihin, nakuha niyo na lahat ng scales. I saw one comment, a subscriber from Dubai, gusto niya malaman paano mag-fillet ng fish kasi in Dubai, apparently, wala na fillet ng fish. So, this is how you're gonna fillet your fish. Part ng tail niya, hihiwain ninyo with a fillet knife, ha? Let's say na, na kaliskisan na itong lapo-lapo na to. And then you also slice here. Kasi nga may kaliskis pa. A fillet knife kasi nagbe-bend siya, di ba? Remember, in our knife lesson, it's bendable. Kasi nga, pag pinush nyo siya ganito, you push your knife pababa. Para ma-sure nyo na ang taning na kukuha ninyo ay yung laman lang. While you are slicing, make sure that it's long slices. So you now have your fillet fish. In between dito sa mga laman-laman niya, may mga malalaking pinik pa yan. So you just get a tweezer or kung meron talagang tool para magang chane or yung pliers, pwede naman yun. Para matanggal nyo itong mga tinik sa gitna. Para you have a boneless fish fillet. Nag-drop kami na episode and tinuro ko kung paano ang mga ginagawa sa Chinese restaurants. Half moon like that. Or you can just slit it into pa ganyan. Depende sa laki ng inyong lapu-lapu. Iba naman, tinutusok yung bato para yung laman niya dyan, pag nag-steam siya or niluto siya, lalabas pa. So, dagdag andar niya siya. Eh, yun na naman. Ayan. So, that's two slits on top of the head. So, yan yung maglalabas pa ng cutting decoration when you steam them. So, let's move forward. With squid, gently take out the head. You exactly yung mga ginagamit pang paella negra, squid ink pasta. I'll just wash it quick, quick lang. Okay. So here you see it's the spine. Yung plastic na yan yun nakanila ng backbone. Krabi ang ganda no. And then inside you feel that mayro pa silang laman. You just have to make sure that you're able to take out everything. Eto mayroon pa siyang taba. Ito taba din to. Ito ay konting itlog. Kaya sumabog na yung ink niya. Kaya pati yung tentacles niya, nagkaroon na rin ng black spots. Mabilis na hugas lang to. When you clean your squid, you want to take out itong pinakabalat niya. So there, you'll take it out. Kasi dapat ang kulay niya ganyan talaga. Pag tinanggal niyo itong layer na to, it'll make your pusit lumot a bit more tender. Faster to cook. So, ito, tagalin natin ito. So, because this is a bit thinner, you can actually just slice this into two and create diagonal slices. Para lang tayong gagawa ng crisscross. 
actually you are just tenderizing them. You're trying to break down their meat. And at the same time, naglagay rin kayo ng decoration. Pag prinito ng nito, or nilasahan nyo, minarinig nyo na, mas madali siya papasok sa loob ng laman ng pusit lumot. So, when you slice your pusit lumot, it's either yung ganito, pwede yung stuff, or pag binuka nyo siyang ganyan, gagawin nyo siyang calamari, or you can use it as part of your um, pasta. But I'd always suggest that you use the ones that are small or pang adobo, kung halimbawa pang mga sabaw, pang mga calamari, kasi yun yung mas masarap kainin. You have to store this in the freezer, kung hindi nyo pa gagamitin within 2 days. So, up when you get home, before you store them, isa-slice nyo na siya kung paano nyo siya gagamitin. So, in this case, let's say, gagamitin ko siya pang calamari. Naka-brunwa or naka-dice. Naka-cube tile. So, this is your squid. And I have here a reusable bag. What you'll do is you put everything inside. After nyo itong hugasan ha, dapat nahugasan nyo bago nyo ilagay sa reusable bag. I would really encourage you guys to invest in reusable bags because it saves Mother Earth. Second, it reduces your gastos. Hindi na kayo bibili ng bibili ng mga plastic bags. It's food safe. Alam nyo, hindi lalasa yung plastic sa pagkain na yun. Making sure to take out all the airs inside. Why are we taking out the air? Because pag may na-stuck na air sa loob, ibig sabihin, meron pang gagalawan yung bacteria pag nagbuo sila. Ayan. Okay. So, ayan na siya. Hugasan nyo na lang. Label it. Pusit lumot, kailan binili. And just give yourself three days. Dapat luto na siya. Take a note of it para hindi kayo nagkakaroon ng spoilage. So, we have our shrimps. Ayan siya. Ang kailangan nyo lang tanggalin is, of course, the antenna. Hindi naman yan edible. Tanggal antenna. Tanggal kanya mga galamay. Tatanggalin nyo rin itong top nung nandito sa subpo. Ito, nakita nyo yan? In some restaurants, they chop off the head, this part. <laughs> Ay, isang punggok. Using a paring knife, if halimbawa ibibake nyo siya, slice the spine of your shrimp or prawn until ending. Ito part ito, pwede nyo rin tanggalin ito. Kasi nga matulis yan. Pag binukas nyo ganyan, you will see itong itong part na yan. Yan ang kanilang bituka. Hindi lang din siya pleasing sa mata makita. So, yan, natanggalin nyo itong green na to. Eh, ito pa naman, napakalaki ng bituka. Ako mo siguro no? So, just make sure na natanggal nyo na siya lahat. So, this is what you call your butterfly shrimp. Iba naman ang ginagawa, tanggal lang ang antenna. So, I'll just show you two types of preparation ng shrimp. Ganun ulit, tanggalin nyo lang yung legs. Sa ibang restaurants, yung mga deep fried, yung mga cereal prawns, tinatanggal lang yung shell sa gitna. And then, nakaiwan ang tail at ang ilo. Konting slit lang para lang matanggal yung vein niya. Pero may mga ibang hipo naman na halos hindi na visible yung kanilang vein eh. So these are some of the preparations that you can do with bronze. Pinakita ko lang kung ano yung madalas na nakikita natin sa mga restaurants. So that's it. Ganyan lang siya. It's either ito ay isi-steam, ito ay pwede i-deep fry. With clams, wala lamang masyadong linis na gagawin dito. Normally, ang clams, before lutuin, you'll have to make it spit or pasukahin. Hindi ba yun yung term na ating mga nanay? Kailangan pasukahin mo lang halaan. So, ang measurement para magsuka ang halaan ay 1 tablespoon of salt per gallon of water. And soak it for around 20 to 30 minutes. Sakto lang na pag niluto nyo, wala na kay gritty sand na makakain. Wala tong fabrication needed. For our tahong, I have here live and cooked. Yung live, syempre, especially kung baked tahong, it's important you take out the barnacles. These are the barnacles kung saan sila nakadikit. Kailangan, kiskisin nyo yan and scrub it with a stainless brush or a steel wool brush para malinis siya. At saka importante matanggal ang mga lumot-lumot na yan kasi iyan ang malakas makapagbigay ng sakit. With the tip of your knife, you just scrape it. Sinescrape yan. Dahil nga sa shell din siya kinakain, 
kailangan malinis mismo yung shell bago iluto. Para naman sa naluto na na tahong, kaya ako sinabi na I'd prefer na nabalian na siya na may lita tubig para bumuka na siya. Ay, natanggal na. Ayan, ito yung tatanggalin niyo, yung beard. Naduling ba ako? <laughs> kailangan malinis siya. Maliliit ang mga tahong lately. Ito wala na siyang bigote, natanggal na yung bigote niya. It's very ideal to cook your mussels on the day that you purchase them. Why? Because it's still fresh. If you're not gonna cook them yet, you can store it in your refrigerator for two days. In a colander like this, ilalagay niyo lang sa bowl, ilalagay niyo siya sa refrigerator with a damp paper towel on top and kailangan a refrigerator ninyo ay nagsi-circulate yung ventilation sa loob. And you just have to check that every now and then kung basa pa ba yung towel or hindi, then i-replace nyo lang. And then may makikita kayong liquid na ganyan, you just discard it. Just make sure lang that you discard it every day. And remember, hanggang 2 days lang pwedeng nasa refrigerator ang mussels and ang clams. Wala naman talaga masyadong linis sa tahong at sa clam dahil basically linis lang ng shell and tanggal lang ng kanilang mustache. Eto na. Ating last protein is crabs. Hi! What's this? Crab. <laughs> yes, and it's a live crab. So, we will now kill the crab. Kaya nakatali iyan kasi para maprotektahan kayo sa sipet. When you kill a crab, it should be important that you kill it humanely. Kailangan nagulat siya. Hindi niya nakita ang darating ang kamatayan niya. Why? Because it keeps their meat at least more tender and juicy. Mas mahirap pa yung nilubog mo siya sa tubig, unti-unti mo siyang pinatay. Hindi kanya bibigyan ng maayos na laman. Yes, my love. Why is the crab still moving? Because it's still alive. You say hi. <laughs> okay. So, ito yung part na to ng crab. Abdominal area. Matigas siya. Sa part na to, dito niyo itatara ka kuchilyo and you will just kill it. Kaya ko ba? <laughs> yung iba kasi sa mata, di ba? Tayo sa abdominal area. So, nag-isay na siya. Patay na siya. Sorry! So, patay na siya. Nagbabay na siya sa akin. Bye! Hala! Uwibigit-bigit pa siya. Just take it out. Mamaya, may lalabas na juice dyan. Yun ang kanilang urine or ang kanilang wiwi. Hindi natin gusto yon. This is the time that you can take out the tale or red. It's the crab, love. Yes, it smells bad. So you take out the claw. Can you can you scratch my nose? Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Tatanggalin nyo rin ito. Linisan nyo yan. That's a totally different episode. Pinakita ko lang how you kill it and how you able to store it. Ang crab, kung hindi nyo pa siya gagamitin in two days, pwede pa siyang buhay. Na huwag nyo lang ilagay sa ref or sa freezer. Just let it be. Sa box na may butas para tuloy-tuloy lang ang buhay niya. Okay! We have talked about seafood today. Pinaka-importanting takeaway ko dito sa mga research ko for our lesson for today is it's very important that you store your seafood properly. Simply because mabilis mag-spoil ang seafood. But it doesn't mean that the next two days hindi nyo na sila magagamit. It's actually very important na malaman nyo paano to sila i-store ng fresh pa sila. So, yun yung pinakabaganda kong na-research na sa pangkalahatan. I hope you guys learned something about seafood handling. Thank you guys because you're actually inspiring me to do what I love best, which is to share my passion with you guys. God bless you all! Don't forget to be thankful, be grateful, be kind, and always be positive. Class dismissed. Bye!